Hi guys, my name is David and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be talking about something that's very really passionate to me, something that I've got in, interested in really recently and that is mangas and graphic novels. So amongst readers and the booktube community, it's not strictly, um, no one says this, but it's kind of implied amongst readers is that Reading mangas and graphic novels is not considered reading. And I do not know why. It's something that I really enjoy. And during this video, I am just going to be listing a couple of points or a bunch of points to try to debunk this mindset that people have. I do not know how long this video will be going on for. And if I can change just one person's mind, then it will make the whole um, process this doing this all worthwhile. So for those of you who may not know what mangas are, they originally came from Japan or you do get other ones like from Korea. But originally mangas are instead of being read from left to right, they are being read from right to left. So basically you start from the end of the book and work your way through it that way. And it has all these different panels as well which are read from the same order so from right to left and also all the speech bubbles and all the text boxes are read in that way as well when you start reading mangas for the very first time and when you pick up one for the very first time and give it a read this structure might put you off or may well not really put you off but may confuse you at times but trust me you will get used to it so I am just going to list three reasons that I personally can think of that people may look down on mangas and graphic novels. Even though I do include graphic novels in this, I will be just focusing mangas in this video. And if this has a positive response, then I might do a separate video focusing on graphic novels if there is any demand for it. So the first point that I want to bring up is the length and the time it takes you to get through a manga. So if you're reading a book, a book is usually about 500, 600 pages roughly. And even though books differ dramatically in length, it takes the reader a specific amount of time to get through it, whether they are a fast reader or a slow reader. It takes them a period of time to get through it. But because mangas are more or less this size that can only be read in one sitting or maybe for a series of several days. And because something like this, which is the first volume, will have numerous volumes. So something like Demon Slayer and One Punch Man have a massive catalog and volumes to them. But because they are all small, they can probably be read in a short amount of time. But with that said, you go from something that can be read in one sitting to something that can take you a couple of weeks or maybe a, a one week or two weeks to actually get through. And this is Yuakazami by Jinju Itu. Hopefully I've said it right, I probably haven't. But this took me a week to get through roughly. And yeah, so something like this can obviously take more time than reading something like this. So that kind of debunks the whole length slash time theory that I have. The other theory is that obviously they have got pictures in them to convey the story and when you're reading a book when you're going through it you can picture the scene and the characters what they look like what the scenery looks like in your minds despite whether it's accurate it can be different from other readers and different from different people's perspectives. But that can come down to the way that the author describes the book and the scenery and all that type of stuff. But with mangas, they obviously come with pictures. So when you look at something like that, so for me um, reading it and if you're reading it and we are looking at this, we can basically see the same thing. So there is no risk of perceiving this to be something different in our own minds and obviously due to the artist the pictures uh, could actually look differently so something like this is a what i would call traditional manga styles so uh, big eyes 
um, over the top expressions, over the top reactions, and you know, typical you know, anime stuff. But you also have something like Jinjuitu, which I have absolutely fallen in love with. And his style of artwork is extremely different. It is more outrageous, I'll say that. It's more unpredictable. And it does actually focus on horror and more graphic things that are more adult and for the mature reader only. And that could be something that people may have this stigma attached to it saying, right, manga's are only for children, but I would never ever give anything by Jinju Itu to someone that's under 16 years of age. But for something like Kaiju number eight, despite its graphic content, it is suitable for teenage readers in my personal opinion. And you obviously have something that's um, like this, which is something like in the middle of both thin things, in my personal opinion, which is called um, the Hellbound. And this is a Korean graphic novel, and this is more um, photo re realistic manga pictures. And it's um, it, obviously it's more realistic to the way that people look there are no big eyes there are no over-the-top expressions it is um, more grounded in reality and it's more realistic in tone and the way that people move and react is exactly the same the way that people would react in the same situations and the third and final theory that I have that people may have this stigma attached to mangas is I want to go back to the image that mangas are have this stigma attached in that they are only for children and teenagers. Because there are a lot of mangas that are attached to an anime series like One Punch Man, Dragon Ball Z, which is massive. And Full Metal Alchemist, which, to be fair, they have a lot of their mangas are more or less rehashes of existing episodes. And obviously you have stuff which is more accessible for children, like Pokemon, which a child could read by an adult which has been brought up with Pokemon and has played the games as a child and has grown up into an into a adult can enjoy. But you obviously have stuff which... I tend to gravitate towards which is horror mangas which is clearly for the mature reader only. So to say that mangas are strictly for children isn't exactly true. Yes they can be read and enjoyed by children and the younger reader but it's not exclusive to that age bracket or to that demographic. So they are the three main reasons that I personally think that people look down on mangas and don't consider them reading. If you can come up with any other theories that you think that mangas aren't considered reading or may contribute to that mindset and that way of thinking, then please comment down below. Um, I would love to get your opinions on this. So now I want to discuss why the things that I just said are completely accurate and I just want to use the Hellbound which is a Korean manga as an example and unlike a Japanese manga which is read from right to left this one is read in the, in the traditional sense from left to right so let me talk about the plot and I will have pictures up on the screen so you can obviously see and have visuals and all that type of stuff I just want to give a bit of a warning here guys that this is not a review video for this manga I will be containing spoilers for this in this video. So if you want to read this book and you don't want to be spoiled, then click off now. I am planning to do a review video for this, which will be spoiler free, which will hopefully come out on the same day. So you know, if you want to read this and you don't want to be spot and, and you don't want to be spoiled, if I can talk, then please watch that spoiler free video. So with that said, the plot of this book is extremely graphic and gory. It portrays this notification that people get on their phones about when they are going to die and being dragged to hell. And, and when this person's time ends and runs out, these three, and these three figures, these demon figures, suddenly appear from nowhere, chase this individual down and burn them alive in this ritual that they 
stand around them and burn this individual alive until they're nothing but bones and ash and all that type of stuff. And when the public witness this, they completely lose their shit. They form cults, they form religious sectors, they blame God, they blame sin. Because in their mind they think that God is punishing sinners and they are saying repent all the time and repent for your sins and say sorry and maybe God will forgive you. So, so the whole structure of humanity kind of crumbles into this primitive state of submitting to a higher power and a higher order. And you obviously have people that are more willing to accept this and join these cults and these fanatics. But you also have people that are more skeptic about this and trying to get on with their day-to-day -day lives and trying to like push that to the side and try to have some sort of normal life, a normal way of living. Even though I did say that this is a horror manga, it doesn't have much horror in it. It's more grounded in the reality of real life people and real life situations. So that's basically the plot. So the characters in this book are extremely adult. They are extremely relatable and they go through some real, um, yeah, a lot of bad stuff. So for example, you have a father that is struggling to cope with being a single father and bringing up his son, which says he's fine, but he kind of keeps to himself all the time, but the father's struggling to cope with this. This same man lost his wife in a graphic and violent murder and how it broke him down to his core and how he kind of shrunk into himself socially. And as a result, he has pushed everyone away from him and he's always, I wouldn't say miserable, but he's kind of down on all the time. But with that said, he gives me the impression that he is trying to do his best and carry on with his life without his beloved wife. And during this book, we have a scene where the son, it has actually seen and or been introduced to the man that was responsible for his mother's death and brutal murder. Because obviously he was a baby when this happened and he couldn't remember it and what the man actually looked like. And when he is confronted by that, he, he has to think about what he wants to do, whether he wants to have a range on this person, whether he wants to hurt them physically or emotionally or forgive them um, or, or what. But it's a very difficult decision for him to make. We also have a woman in this book that is struggling to cope with the death or imminent death of her dying mother. And it's very difficult for her, despite the fact that her mother is smoking while at death's door. And this just stresses her a lot. And while they are out and about in the car, we they are also attacked by this group of cult leaders or cult members rather. While they are sitting in their car, they are viciously attacked. Well, primarily the elderly woman and the young lady, her daughter, tries to defend her mother and ultimately she gets beaten up herself and attacked herself while trying to do the right thing. And more tragically, we have a woman that is a mother of two young children, a boy and a girl, that gets the notification on her phone that she is going to hell and she wants to try to get her children out of the country before this all goes down because she doesn't want them to see her get killed by these monsters and have that trauma attached to them and everyone's trying to get the children away from her because they consider her to be a sinner because she's got this notification on her phone and it's a very tragic scene when she goes to the airport with them and drops them off and how she has to basically separate herself forcibly from her children and how when they go to the airport they are very confused well the boy isn't confused but the girl does know what's happening and they are trying to cope with why this has happened to them and later on we do 
see the same mother sitting alone in the apartment because there's all these cameras around because they want to catch this and broadcast it to the world and how she is sitting on her bed waiting for this ultimate ticking clock to count down to zero and for her death but she just sitting there completely reserved and accepting of her fate and yeah it's just a very powerful scene it really is and a very powerful moment and obviously you have world building as well it depends on the mangas because if it's something like that's got a volume or part of a volume it doesn't show you all of it but it's supposed to give you a taste and flavor of the world rather than something that is like Jinju Itu, which is in one book and in one volume so this compared to something like Kaiju has got more well building in it than this can offer but that depends on the manga itself obviously the ending it obviously depends on whether it's something that's one volume which the ending can be either tied up in a nice bow or left to the reader's imagination and obviously it can depend on the writer as something like um, Jinju Itu he kind of leaves it up to the reader's imagination about what happened next and then you have something like Kaiju, which is part of a volume, so it actually leaves on the cliffhanger. So this might upset some readers, but that's just how it goes sometimes, I suppose. So yeah, that's just my video on why I think that mangas aren't considered reading, but why they should be considered reading. I know it all comes down to the perspective of the individual and what their preferences are but I think despite whether you have read the manga or not that you at least should at least try one before you dismiss it completely so that's just my two cents on the topic as always comment down below let me know your opinion on this um, idea as well and this subject so with all that out of the way have a great day read some awesome books and I will see you all in my next video